As I was going over this sermon uh, Thursday and looking at Scripture, that song just popped into my head. And uh, I tell you, if anybody knew about scars, it was the Apostle Paul. And uh, he had been through so much. We are going to finish our study in Acts. Uh, we've been in it for over two years. I don't know if you're counting or not, but we have went verse by verse uh, through all of it. And uh, we just praise God for uh, what he has done through this study. And uh, today, I want to talk to you about finish strong. Finish strong. If you have a bulletin and want to follow along with us, you can. And if you want to make some notes, you surely can. Let me give you the outline. Number one, preach the word. Preach the word. Finish strong. Two, fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your ministry. Everybody that has been born again, everyone who is saved has a ministry. God's leaving you here on earth for something. There's something specific he wants you to do. And number three, finish the race. Folks, there's been a lot of people drop, drop out of races. Even the Christian race, there have been people drop out. But I'm telling you, God wants you to finish. Acts, if you would, look in Acts chapter uh, 28, and we just have two scriptures to finish it up, and then we'll go to another text. Acts 28, verse 30. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him. He was waiting for a trial from Nero, and we do know Nero was not a good king. Okay, He was not a Christian, and he ruled with uh, much discipline and, and, and threw, threw folks in jail and just was not a good person. Verse 31, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. So you look at Paul's life and all that he had been through, three missionary journeys, shipwreck, all these things I'm going to share with you in just a second. But yet, in house arrest, he did not feel sorry for himself. He could not go outside, okay? But yet, when people came to him, he always shared the gospel. He kept preaching the gospel. He kept talking to people about Jesus Christ. And so we can see there what was going on. Matter of fact, when we think of scars, uh, turn to 2 Corinthians with me. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22. 2 Corinthians 11, 22. The Bible says, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. And historically, he's talking about uh, false teachers and false prophets there. He said, are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more, I am more, and in labors more abundant. If you remember, he would just say, and Festus told him, Paul, you're crazy, man. You're mad. All this religious stuff has made you go nuts. But he preached the word of God in stripes above measures, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes. Minus one. Folks, on his back would be 195 scars. He went through this. Paul did. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night, uh, uh, a night and day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen. His own countrymen sold him out in perils of the Gentiles, in perils of the cities, in perils of the wilderness, and in perils of the sea, in perils against false brethren. They lied on the Apostle Paul in weariness and toil and sleepliness, often in hunger and thirst and fastings, often, often in cold and nakedness. Besides the other things, what comes up to me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Folks, here was a man that was one of the greatest soul winners, one of the greatest church planners, one of the greatest disciplers ever walked the face of the earth. And even before in Acts, he said, none of these things move me. 
He was persecuted a lot. He had opposition everywhere he went. But yet, he said, I will finish strong. You know, history tells us that Paul had his day in court with the emperor Nero. Although we have no biblical account of the trial, most scholars believe Paul once again presented his case and won his freedom. One thing we know for sure, Paul kept preaching the word of God and winning people to Jesus Christ. Some believe that during this period, Paul made his way to Spain to fulfill the ministry dream that he had. Nobody knows for sure. We do know he met up with Titus, Philemon, and Onesimus, according to Scripture and timelines. Eventually, Paul was arrested once again in Troas. He was dragged uh, back to Roman chains and landed on another cold prison floor in a Roman dungeon. There's a place in Rome where Paul supposedly spent his last day in their Mamertine prison. Paul's trial before Nero was totally different this time. Everything about the trial in Nero had tra- changed dramatically. Nero handed down a swift sentence of death on the Apostle Paul. Alone, but without fear, Paul was beaten with rods and then executed. Days later, as he walked towards his death, he was tired and he was limping. He was wearing dirty clothes, but not ashamed or degraded. Paul demonstrated the verse, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain, found in Philippians 1.21. No axe across his back or back of his neck would rob him of, of this triumphant destiny of being with his Lord and Savior. The lictors beat him with rods until he bled profusely. Then the executioner swung his axe blade on the back of Paul's neck as he died instantly. A man of grit and of grace, the Apostle Paul finished his race with determination and satisfaction of a job well done. The year was A.D. 67, and Paul finished strong. While in prison in Rome, he wrote the prison epistles, uh, the books of Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. Others who think he went to Spain uh, somewhere along that timeline, he wrote the first and second book of Timothy and Titus. I believe with all my heart, Paul's work for the kingdom of God, of the kingdom of God, will never be duplicated here on earth. Now turn to me, with me, to Second Timothy, Second Timothy, chapter four, and let's look at finish strong. Chapter 4, verse 1, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Paul is reminding Timothy, who was in the ministry and was going to pastor, and again, there's no way he could have taken Paul's place. All right, he just couldn't. You know, it'd be like following Billy Graham or following folks like that. All right, there's only one Billy Graham. All right, there was only one Apostle Paul, but he was reminding Timothy that one day every one of us, everyone in this building is going to stand before God. And folks, that, that should not scare a Christian, but I'm telling you, it makes us think about what we are doing now. Are we following God? Are we in God's will? Are we seeking God? And then he says in verse 2, preach the word. Now, I understand Paul was an evangelist, okay? He was a great teacher, and he preached the Word. But do you realize every Christian preaches the Word every day of their life? You say, wait a minute, Brother Mike. I don't have a Bible out. I don't have an audience. I'm telling you, your life is preaching the Word. People watch you all the time. They watch and see what you do and how you react and what you say. They look at attitudes. They look at... Uh, the heart and the sincerity of things that are going on. So Paul, and, and folks, you have to realize the last words of anyone is important. And for Paul to say this, this is some of his last words to young Timothy. He said, preach the word. And then it says, be ready in season and out of season. Always be ready to share is what he's saying. Always be ready to share. Be ready to share God's Word with people. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and 
teaching. And all those things are needed, okay? When, it's, when somebody's wrong, they need to know that they're wrong, especially about the Word of God. Exhort is an encouraging people. But we also, long-suffering, we need to be patient with people. We don't need to judge people. And teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Folks, this is happening right now. People want to hear something else. Okay, They don't want to hear the truth of the Word of God. Jesus said Himself in John chapter 8, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Folks, the Word of God is the truth. God's Word come down for us. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap for themse- up for themselves teachers. And, and folks, you can get online and you can listen to a hundred or maybe a thousand different preachers. But anyone you listen to, all right, you need to know Are they preaching the Word of God? We don't need man's opinion. My opinion today really doesn't matter. What matters is what God's Word says and and us listening to the Word of God. Folks, God loves you. God never has made a mistake. His his Word is true every time. Verse 4, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned into fables. And folks, fables, we know what that is. That's something that's made up. That's a story that is not true. But I got news for you, folks. Jesus' story is true. He was born of a virgin. He lived a perfect life. He went to the cross and died for you and I. But after three days, he arose again. And because he is alive, sitting at the hand of right hand of the Father, we, if we will accept Him into our lives, can be alive and live in heaven forever and ever. And folks, that's the truth. The Word of God is the truth. Look back in verse 14. Look back in 2 Timothy 3.14. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. Oh, folks, I had the privilege of being in church as a young person. All right, I was in church nine months before I was born. My mom worked in the nursery. My dad took us to church every time the doors were open. And I believe with all my heart that's one of the reasons I'm standing here today. Not because I'm a good speaker, not because I'm a spiritual man or or some hierarchy thing that, you know, none of that, folks. I am here today because the Word of God changed my life. My parents gave me that opportunity. Verse 15, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures. Folks, the Bible is the Word of God. They are called sacred writings. Sacred writings. All right? Then he describes, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. Folks, I'm telling you, God wants to talk to you. God wants fellowship with you. And we do it through His Word. We do it through prayer. We do it through His Holy Spirit. And it says, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. There are 66 books. There's many authors of those different books. But they have a common thread throughout all of them. These men that wrote it, they're not perfect. Some of them wasn't even close to perfect. But the Holy Spirit spoke to them and they penned. Holy Scripture literally means God breathed. This is God's Word. His breath. This is what we are reading. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Okay, doctrine is what is right. How do we know what is right? The Bible tells us. That's what doctrine is. Doctrine is why, what we believe. Two ordinances of the church we do. One we did today, baptism, water baptism, immersion in water is is baptism. Another one we will do, I think the first week in November, is the Lord's Supper. We need to know why we take the Lord's Supper. We need to know why we need to be baptized. It's all found in the Word of God. It is profitable for doctrine, 
for reproof. What is reproof? What it is not. All right? Read the Old Testament, folks. Read the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not have any other gods before you. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not lie. All right? And you can just go down through that for reproof, for correction. You know what correction is? How to get it right. I don't know about you, but I want to know how to get it right. If I'm not right, I want to know how to get it right. And that's what, that's what correction is, and for instruction in righteousness. And here's the hard part, how to stay right. See, anybody can do it for a little while, but instruction in righteousness is following Jesus. Instruction in righteousness is listening to the Holy Spirit. Instruction in the righteousness is reading the Word of God. If you will read the Word of God, I promise you, you will grow as a Christian. Now look at the purpose that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You know what complete means? Not perfect. There's not a person here that is perfect. Complete means mature in Christ. Oh, folks, Paul is saying, man, you need to finish strong. He tells you to preach the Word, read the Word, study the Word. Your Word is a message, and your life is a message to everyone around you. So we see, preach the Word. Number two, fulfill your ministry. Look at verse 5. But you be watchful in all things. Folks, I believe with all my heart, we pass people up all the time. I do it. Sometimes I, there, there'll be a moment that I am somewhere and I do something, and then as I just, I'm so busy going from point A to point B, I didn't stop to think about that person. And I have to sometimes turn around and go back and do what the Lord has told me to do. And that's what he's saying. We as Christians need to look for opportunities to help people. Folks, there's a, there's a lost and dying world out there. There are people that are hurting out there. There's a lot of hurting people. And we as Christians can make a difference in this world when we help people. So you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. I, I'm just telling you, if you live for Christ, you're going to be persecuted. The Bible tells us that all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall be persecuted. Not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to like what you say. Not everybody. I mean, and Paul, and think about this. Just think about how many towns he was kicked out of. He let, literally fleed for his life because he preached the Word of God and lived it out in his life. Look at the next part. Do the work of an evangelist. I realize there's a gift of evangelism, and I realize there's some good folks that have the gift of evangelism. David Brooks had the gift of evangelism. Scott Warren has the gift of evangelism. It's a gift, but he's still asking all of us to think about the people around us. There are people around us that need the Lord, and we need to be equipped, all right, not just to invite them to church, but create a relationship, a fellowship with that person so that we can sit down and share the Word of God with them. I'm excited about uh, Scott. He and I, could, I think it starts October the 24th. Two weeks it starts. And he's doing uh, Sharing Jesus Without Fear Again. And it's a four-week course and you can come out of your Sunday school class, or if you don't come to Sunday school, you'll meet right over here uh, where Lauren just went out. I hate to pick the love Lauren, but folks, she's carrying twins. She can go out anytime she wants, all right? But what I'm saying is that will give you the confidence in sharing your faith with others. Paul says this, but you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Folks, we all have a ministry to do. We all have things that we like to do. Some of our people go down and they feed at the Salvation Army. Others go out and, and they help children. We do a lot of ministries. Some just out the door here uh, is, is the Welcome Committee. That's a ministry. Our greeters at the doors, that's a ministry. 
Every one of you have something that you can do for Jesus Christ. And all that your ministry does, it sets up a gospel presentation where you can witness to people around you. Ministry also, it's not just inside of the church, folks. It's outside the walls of this church. It's so, so important. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. Go with me if you would. Matthew 28, verse 18. And these were the last words of Jesus, by the way. And Jesus came and spoke to them, talking about the the eleven, the disciples. All authority has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Folks, Jesus is King of kings, and he is Lord of lords. He is King of kings. And I'm telling you, he's coming back. According to the Word of God, he will be riding a white horse, and I'm telling you, he will rule and reign. All authority has been given me in heaven and earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. Well, folks, we can't go sitting here in a chair. All right? Go means get outside the walls of this church. And folks, that's what Paul did all the time. He established churches. He, he mentored leaders. He prayed. He was a man of prayer. And all of us are, 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 are chosen. We are supposed to make disciples, duplicate ourselves. We are Christians. Can you imagine what would happen in one calendar year if every one of us duplicated ourselves and if we went and won somebody to Christ? You realize a year from now, this place would be packed. It would be jam-packed. Folks, this is the Great Commission. This is the Great Commission. This is what he's saying, all right? He is saying, fulfill your ministry. You've got something to do. God left you here for a specific purpose, and that is to share the love of Christ with others around you. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which we did, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and listen to this, and lo, I am with you always. Well, what if I mess up? Folks, you can't mess the gospel up. You can't mess it up. What if if I don't say the right you? I'm just telling you, Jesus sending out the disciples said, hey, just listen to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's going to help you. It's going to help you. And lo, I am with you always. Folks, he's with us. All the time, God is with us. Jesus is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us. Always, even to the end of the age. Folks, I'm telling you, God is going to see you through. He is going to see you through. What a promise from God. Folks, sharing the gospel with others is our main ministry and our main focus. You think about our our, uh, emphasis that we had even in preparation for our Bible conference. It's who's your one? Who's your one? And Scott's going to talk about that here at the end of the service. But basically what we're asking you to do, we want to keep this going. We are going to ask you to identify someone that is your friend and doesn't go to church anywhere. And then we're going to ask you, to create a relationship with them and talk to them and invite them to church. And then the last thing is, uh, they may be saved right here at church, but the thing that we want to do also is we want you to share. Folks, they will listen to you. you. You are with them. You are around them. You can have a great influence. I believe with all my heart, one-on-one witnessing is the most effective witness that there is. Just you with them. And we want to help you fulfill your ministry. So we see that Paul said, preach the word, fulfill your ministry. And number three, finish the race. Finish the race. Look at verse 6. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. Folks, he knew what was coming up. He knew that his life was about over. He knew, and, and folks, I am telling you, I've been I, I, because of 
uh, who I am. Folks, I'm around death all the time. And they know, I, I'm telling you, most people know, all right, when it is getting very, very close. And Paul was getting very close. And he just said, Timothy, carry on the mantle. Run the race. You don't run it for Paul. You run it for the Lord Jesus Christ. Run, Timothy, run. Verse 7, I have fought the good fight. <laughs> you know, Paul, he wouldn't back down from anyone. All right, if they were wrong, they were wrong. He fought the devil all the time. Satan wanted to stop him. Satan wanted to destroy him. But he says, I fought the good fight. I have finished my race. He was still running. He was still going. Matter of fact, history tells us that even when he was chained and he had a death sentence on him, he would witness to the soldiers that were guarding them and the, those soldiers would get saved. They would invite Jesus Christ into their life. With his last breath, he shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Folks, I am telling you, nobody can take faith from you. Nobody can take hope from you. No matter what happens. And folks, if you look at what's going on, it's not going to get better, folks. I'm not trying to be a doomsday. I'm simply saying it's going to get worse and worse. This world hates Christianity. They're making laws that are just unbelievable. And I'm telling you, folks, we have to keep fighting. We have to keep the faith. Faith is so important. Faith is believing God. Faith is trusting God. Faith is saying, I don't care how bad it gets, I know things are going to be all right. And that's the thing you have as a Christian. I know because the Word of God says, when I take my last breath here on earth, I will take my first breath in heaven. No matter what happens to me, He's saying, don't lose your faith. Don't give up. Never quit. Never throw in the towel. To be absent from the body, 2 Corinthians 5 a, is to be present with the Lord. Folks, I love my life. I love my church. I love all this that's going on. But I'm telling you, as good as worship is here, it will be a hundred times better in heaven. Why? No more pain. No more sorrow. No temptation. No Satan. We will be walking streets of gold, folks. We will be kicking up gold dust and have a smile on our face all the time. We're going to go see and meet. I want to meet Jesus first. And then I want to meet the Apostle Paul. I want to see some of those Old Testament saints. And we've got all of eternity to do that. So don't quit. Don't throw the towel in. Keep the faith. Why? Verse 8. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not to me only, but to all who love God. His appearing. Folks, Revelation 22. I, I'm, I'm like Revelation 22, and Jesus says, Even come now, Lord Jesus. I'm not afraid to die. And you know why I'm not afraid to die? Because I know where I'm going. I'm going to heaven. Two things, and we close. 1 Corinthians 9, talking about running the race. 1 Corinthians 9. Do you not know that those who run the race all run, but one receive the prize? And again, the Roman games and all those, uh, he, that's what he was talking about. I mean, in the Olympics, I don't know about you, but I love to watch the Olympics. It doesn't matter winter or summer or whatever. All right? And even in a marathon, I cannot imagine running 26.2 miles. The only time I run is if something's chasing me. Okay? But can you imagine standing on the podium from an Olympic perspective, and putting that gold medal around you, and I understand it's just gold and that, but folks, all that those people do, all the training that they do, goes for that one moment. And folks, I'm telling you, 
everything that we do for Christ will be for that one moment when we meet Him face to face. And all I want to hear Jesus say is, well done, my good and faithful servant. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone competes for the prize as temperate uh, in all things. You know what temperate is? It's discipline. You know what all of our problems is? It's discipline. Uh, it is. I've been on this diabetic diet, and I'll tell you, it's no good. All right? All right? If it, if it tastes good, you better spit it out. That's just the way it is. You're not supposed to do it. I cannot wait. <laughs> I, I get to heaven and sit down at the Lamb, Supper of the Lamb, and eat what I want and not gain a pound. All right? What does it take to be on a diet? It takes discipline. What does it take to prepare for an athletic event? It takes discipline. What does it take to run the race as a Christian? It takes discipline. You have to say no to, to some things. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself shall be disqualified. You know what Paul is really saying? And folks, we're not perfect. I am not, believe me, I am not, talk to my wife, I am not perfect. Okay? But folks, we should strive for perfection. You know what he's really saying? Let me just put it in plain English. If you're going to talk the talk, walk the walk. That's what he's saying. All right, be the same on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday as you are on Sunday. And to do that, it takes discipline. And in the last scripture, Philippians 3, and I close with this. Philippians 3. Again, Paul penned this. Philippians 3. And we need to do this, folks. Verse 13. Verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. You know what Satan likes to do to you? Remind you of your past. Folks, if you're living in the past, you're not living for the future. If you're living in the past, you're looking backwards. Have you ever noticed a car? If you're in a car and you're driving, have you ever noticed that the rear view mirror is just not that big? Why? You don't look back much, all right? Only when you back. But what is the windshield? Wide open. It's wide open. Look forward. Quit looking back. Quit listening to Satan. Quit being defeated is what he is saying. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. See, some people say heaven is the goal. No, heaven is the place you're going. You know what the goal is while you're here on earth? It's holiness. It's being like Jesus. Oh, folks, we all have a race that we are running. And I'm telling you, I want to finish strong. Father, thank you for this day. And God, I just thank you for the Word. I thank you for the book of Acts. I thank you for Paul's life. And God, as a Christian, I want to run the race. I want to fight the fight. I want to keep the faith. I want to hear those words from my Lord and my Savior. And God, if there's someone here today that just doesn't know you, they don't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, God, I pray that you would speak to their heart right now. God, I pray that they would listen to the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And God, I pray they would come forward and accept you into their life. God, they were not here by an accident. They were here for a reason and a purpose. And God, I know that might be salvation. It may be for a Christian, a rededication. Or Lord, just uh, joining this church or, or coming for baptism. Maybe they haven't been scripturally baptized and they need to do that. Whatever you want to do during the invitation, God, we give it to you. It is yours, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come?